18 miles today. At this point, I'm realizing that it's just the mileage from now on is, is, is pain. It's just gonna hurt, it's misery. And it's gonna be less physical strength and more mental strength. Once again, I'm leaving my water behind because I don't have an apparatus to carry it with me currently. I, would, I mean, I'm only doing two additional miles today from last time, so shouldn't be that bad. But I'll be honest, I am not feeling the love right now. I'll feel good once I get going, but right now I'm just, uh, I know it's just going to be three hours of, well, two hours of okay and then, then probably a good 40 minutes of misery after that two hours. Let's go though, let's get it. What are we here for? We're here to crush it. That's one, one of 13. This is two of 13, two of 13. Uh, this is number three of 13. I've already got a little bit of leg pain going. Let's hope that just sort of works its way out, but four of 13. Number five, this is number six of 13. I'm a little bit less than halfway. Uh, I have a pretty good consistent pace going. However, you know, that was just the easy part. It's just gonna get harder from here. And so far I don't feel like I need to stop for water, so I'm gonna kind of wait for that. And uh, just keep zoning out. Seven of 13, feeling a little bit tired. And as I'm doing the math in my head, I think I actually have about 0.8 more of a stretch to make the 18 miles. So it's really like I'm at seven out of 14-ish. So that was eight, eight of that 13, 14. I'm coming down to my car to grab a sip of water. All right, that's it. We're back on the trail. So we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, possibly 14, but if it's not a, whatever, it's too hard to explain. This is nine. Something's not right. I haven't looked at my mileage yet, but something ain't right with my calculation here. I think I'm well far away from being done. Number 10. I, I, God, I'm totally miscalculated. I thought I had one more down and back. I have more like two and a half. So, uh, possibly more, I don't know. I can't, I can't do the math, but I'm not even, I'm not even at like 14 miles yet. And I thought I was almost done. So, I'm coming down my car to get a last swig of water. Eleven, I think. Yeah, eleven. I think. I don't know. If I can just sort of think out loud. I really hate running. I'm not into it. And I think one of the reasons why I feel that way is because of uh, how much discipline it takes. You know? I have no problem with the discipline of doing something hard or doing something consistently. But where I struggle is doing things that aren't extreme. It's really easy to motivate yourself to do something really hard when it involves passion. You know, feel really powerful and angry and lift a heavy weight or feel really inspired to run a fast mile. But we're endurance sports doing these long runs where it gets challenging 
is the fact that there is no passion. There's no anger. There's just discipline over a long period of time. Consistency. There is a swimmer, a really accomplished swimmer that I was interviewing at the YMCA. And uh, he told me what really separates the winners from the losers in longer swimming events is the people who don't try in their few hundred yards or few hundred strokes. And what he meant by that was it's very easy to get caught up in the adrenaline of competition and burn yourself out in the beginning. Use all your energy up and you have no consistency. And I can feel that, you know, even in just a 13, 14, 15 mile run where at the beginning you feel pumped up because you know you're about to do something really hard and you think about how far you've come and what you're about to accomplish and all this. And so you're pushing hard. And this is where I struggle because I like to listen to music, and get all amped up and go fast. But then here I am on my 15th mile and I'm hurting real bad. So it's like, where's all my passion now? Where's all my desire to run fast? Well, I burned it all up and now I'm suffering from that. And that makes me think about how a lot of endurance athletes are just extreme sports, you know, uh, really professional bodybuilders and people who do Ironmans, they're riddled with people in recovery, people who are overcoming addiction. And now, while I've never faced severe addiction, I can only sort of hypothesize based on my experience now and my small day-to-day -day addictions that I have that change to make true meaningful long-term change takes that same kind of consistent discipline. It's really easy to get yourself all hyped up about a diet in day one, two, and three, you feel all good, but day six, seven, and eight, where's your passion for losing weight, you know? You give up. It's not as, a diet's not as exciting on week three. And I think with addiction recovery, it's really uh, motivating in the beginning, but that's not what matters. It's about consistent discipline over a long period of time. I'm at 17.44 on Strava and I'm at 18.74 on my Fitbit. I don't know which one's right, but I figure I'm safe to split the difference and stop right now. So I'm running up to the car and calling it a day because I am wrecked. And I'm ready for my water. And I'm ready to stop. And I'm ready to warm up my hands. And I'm ready to drink something salty that's full of sugar. And I'm ready to do anything in the entire world than run right now. What do you, what do you want me to do? Because I'll do anything. Oh, gotta stay up. Gotta stay standing up. That's the freshest water in the whole damn world. There ain't nothing in the entire universe that tastes better than this water right here, right now. Mm. I know you're not supposed to guzzle, but guzzle this. I'm definitely dehydrated. I gotta hydrate better. Oh, I need to stretch a little bit. I gotta, otherwise I'm gonna be dead. All right, what's the damage? A 10 point, or a 10.57 pace. I'm very pleased with that. That's the furthest I've ever run in my life, period. That was the longest amount of time I've ever run in my life. Bye-bye. <sighs>